In 2004, the Planetary Coral Reef Foundation's research vessel visited the Phoenix Islands as part of its ongoing mission to map and monitor the coral reefs of the planet. PCRF's international team of scientists and volunteers have conducted intense scientific studies on coral reefs around the world for the last 12 years. The planetary picture of coral reefs is grim. Two-thirds of the reefs studied by PCRF are at serious risk, corroborating figures from the World Resources Institute, which show that a quarter of the world's reefs have already disappeared. The Phoenix Islands lie at the heart of the Pacific Ocean, just below the equator and just east of the Dateline. They are extremely remote, barely inhabited and accessible only by a 900 mile or more boat trip. A team of biologists studied the Phoenix Reefs in 2000 and 2002. These are some of David Abura's photographs taken at the time. The international press picked up on their data and the Phoenix Islands became known as the most pristine reefs on the planet. This is what we found when we got to Canton, where all those stunning photographs had been taken. Each and every table coral inside the lagoon was dead. In the two and a half years since anyone had studied the Phoenix Reefs, they had almost disappeared. At Canton especially, the resemblance to a graveyard was overwhelming. Just nine months before we got there, National Geographic wrote of them, we must save such places because the oceans are key to global survival. The Phoenix Reefs in general proved to be a paradox of explosive fish life including all the top predators, sharks, snappers, turtles, but swimming against a backdrop of almost completely dead corals. What happened to the corals that caused them to die so fast? With so few corals left alive, does the reef stand a chance of recovery? And without the corals, how long can the fish life remain? PCRF has been an eyewitness to the collapse of many reef systems, but there are few possible causes for the Phoenix catastrophe. Corals are susceptible to vicious disease which erode away living tissue, but at the Phoenix Islands there were no traces of an epidemic. Excessive logging or intense agriculture can throw sediment onto a reef, choking corals to death, but there are no trees or farms. The crown of thorns is a deadly sea star that in large numbers can wipe out vast areas of coral, but we observed only one crown of thorns during our dives here. Overharvesting of top predators like sharks and turtles can wreak havoc with the ecological balance of a reef system, but we found the predator population to be almost completely intact. Destructive fishing methods are rife around the world. Cyanide, dynamite, even naturally growing plants can be used to stun fish and in the process, corals are destroyed. But these methods are not in use at the Phoenix Islands. Pollution from industry, oil, sewage feed fast-growing algae that can easily dominate the reef substrate. But there is no source for pollution anywhere near these remote reefs. So what exactly did kill so many corals in such a short space of time? NOAA publishes information on global ocean temperatures and we found from their website that an intense overheating of the central Pacific Ocean began just as the scientists were leaving the area in 2002. The bright pink areas show extreme and persistent overheating. The hotspot lasted from August 2002 into March 2003. When corals bleach they can usually recover if conditions return to normal within about three months. But with extreme rises in temperatures lasting more than seven months, the corals in the Phoenix Islands didn't stand a chance. 
The decimation of these recently pristine reefs was brought about by planetary, not local factors. Global warming is undeniable. For PCRF, the Phoenix Islands are the canary in the coal mine. Coral reefs are dying, but what does that mean for our biosphere? Coral reefs provide $370 billion in annual revenue. Coral reefs protect the coastline of 109 countries. Coral reefs are home to 25% of fish species. Coral reefs provide the basis for 10% of the planet's diet. Coral reefs hold untapped pharmaceutical potential. Coral reefs are the most biodiverse marine ecosystem we have. We live on a water planet, and coral reefs are telling us something about our planet. But how many of us are listening? It's time for action.